Welcome back Raiders and Raiderettes to your mid-season 2025 NFL Draft top prospects right here from the Raider D podcast. We're going to be going over quarterbacks. We're going to be going over wide receivers. We're going to be going over running backs, offensive line, all kinds of good stuff for you right now. But before we get into that, I just want to say to all 9,773,000 of you who have subscribed, thank you and salute my brothers and sisters in the Raider Nation and to the 65% of you who still have yet to uh, hit that subscribe button. I would just like to say, I would like to earn the opportunity to earn your loyalty and your subscription right here by consistently bringing you the best Raiders content on a daily basis including breaking news and insider reports, as well as expert analysis and sometimes not so expert. But I will always tell you this. I'll always bring you the real. I'll always tell you the truth and I'll always give you my best opinion. It might not always be right and you might not always agree, but I will always respect your opinion as well. And you are always free to comment and I'll do my best to read all of them and respond as many as I can. And one more thing, I like to give stuff away. So, on this one, you know we have the Draft 2025 for the Raider D Podcast. So comment Draft 2025 down below to enter to win your chance of another surprise giveaway. Last week, we gave away $500 worth of stuff. We'll be doing giveaways again this week as we do each and every week here. And guess what? You don't even have to send me $50 on Venmo like some of the other channels out there. I do it because I actually love you. Now, let's jump into today's episode. We're going to be talking about the quarterback situation with the Las Vegas Raiders and who I think the Raiders should absolutely try to get in the 2025 NFL draft. And it's not who you think. I know everybody's talking about Shador Sanders, just like last year, everybody was talking about Caleb Williams, but I think the guy that everybody is sleeping on right now is Cam Ward. Well, Unless you've been watching my channel. If you've been watching my channel, you're not sleeping on Cam Ward because I've been telling you about him for weeks now. And I think that he is the equivalent of a Jaden Daniels coming out. He's probably going to be the second quarterback that's going to be drafted. That's going to bode well for the Raiders. If the Raiders are a top five pick, we'll probably only have one other team that may be ahead of us that's looking for a quarterback. And they will most likely go with Shador Sanders because he's the one getting all of the hype. And everybody is expecting the Raiders to try and get Shador Sanders because because of his connection to Tom Brady. Now that doesn't always mean that a connection with a player also means that you're going to go up and draft him. Tom Telesco is not one to move up in a draft and try and grab a guy. So he kind of likes the guy to fall in his lap. If Shador Sanders is the first quarterback taken off the board, that's going to leave Cam Ward. And in my opinion, Cam Ward is the better quarterback for a couple of different reasons. Number one, the guy can play off platform like no other. He has an amazing ability to get the ball out of his hands, no matter how his body is being contorted. Even if the defense is trying to sack him, he can still whip the ball 20, 30 yards down the field. And he can sidearm it like he's playing baseball, like he's a professional in the MLB. This kid is absolutely phenomenal. And what makes him so great is he has a dual threat quarterback who can break off a 40 yard touchdown run if he so chooses, but that's normally not what he chooses. He chooses to use his mobility and his uncanny sixth sense in the pocket to get out of a sack and open up wide receivers down the field and chuck them the ball. Kind of reminiscent of a Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen. This is what I like about him. Now versus Shador Sanders, who I think is gonna have an excellent career in the NFL, and if the Raiders end up with him, I'm not gonna be upset with it at all. But he has the tendency to hold on to the ball a bit too long, and that's not gonna bode well in the NFL. He's already one of the most sacked quarterbacks in college football right now, whereas Cam Ward is one of the least sacked quarterbacks as of the filming of this, Cam only has 11 sacks and Shador has over 26. That's not a good stat to live by when it comes to the NFL, where defensive pressures are going to be even that much more. And with that being said, I'm going to go with Cam Ward. Disagree or agree? Drop a comment down below along with your draft 2025 for your chance to win. Now we're going to move on to the number to pick that the Raiders should go with. And that is Tate Roa McMillan, wide receiver out of Arizona, who stands at six foot five, 212 pounds. He's already racked up 780 yards, four touchdowns, and he has a 4540 dash. For a man that size, a 4540 is 
very respectable speed. He can definitely take it to the house if he gets out in the open. He is very good at the contested catch. He has very soft hands, but he has very strong hands when he's bringing it down in contested catches. He's an excellent route runner. You can line him up as your X receiver. You can line him up as your slot receiver. He can do whatever you need him to do. Heck, he can even play tight end if you want him to play tight end, though I think that would be a waste of his skills. Line him up as your number one replacement for Devontae Adams. Now, the thing about McMillan is there is a chance that he could go in the first round. Right now, currently, draft boards have him late first round, early second round. Now, the Raiders will most likely have an early second round. The Raiders may have to move up in order to get him. I think if they do, I wouldn't be mad about it. I think that the Raiders absolutely need to make sure that we have replaced Devontae Adams with a true number one wide receiver. And McMillan certainly fits that bill. Number three on my draft board is Amari and Hampton running back. This guy is six feet tall, 220 pounds, and runs a 4440 dash. And he's a downhill runner with an excellent jump cut and vision. The guy can block, the guy can run, and he has enough top end speed to outrun DBs if he has the proper angle. Something that the Raiders have suffered from in the running back core for too many years. Guys will get out into the secondary, but they're not able to outrun anybody even if they have a good angle. And so what should be a home run with our running backs is turning into a big gain, but not the touchdown, which we all want to see. Well, with Hampton, we would certainly have that capability as he has just enough top end speed with the proper angle to make those 20 or 30 yard runs into home runs and get the touchdown. So I definitely would like to see him be picked up as we will have an early third round as well as probably a second early third round thanks to the Jets also having a losing record. The Raiders should be able to pick him up in the early third round if he is still available. Now he's projected to be a mid second to an early third as current standing stand. Our running back room right now is not best in class and our rushing offense has been abysmal. So the Raiders need to address this by bringing in a real playmaker, a young running back who can certainly take the top off if he gets into the secondary and Hampton certainly fits the bill for the Raiders. Now, we're gonna have two third round draft picks thanks to our trade with Devontae Adams to the Jets. Now, because the Jets also are just as bad as the Raiders, we'll have a high third round draft pick. And hopefully, we will have Tate Ratledge who is a guard out of Georgia. Now, Tate is probably going to be the second guard taken off of the board, and he is an absolute monster. This dude blocks with absolute violence. Think JPJ with a little bit taller and a little bit meaner. He stands at six foot six, 320 pounds, and he is an absolute bulldozer in the run offense. He can block and he loves to pancake people and he loves to block downfield. Now he is pretty decent at the pass pro. He's gonna have to increase that once he gets to the NFL and he's going up against elite defensive tackles. However, he certainly has the strength and the athleticism. He simply needs to learn a little bit more technique and he will be an absolute beast coming in the future. This would allow the Raiders to move JPJ over to center, cut Andre James, as well as his big contract and get out from underneath that. And we would finally have a solid offensive line up and down the line with Glaze, Ratledge, JPJ, Parham, and Miller. Our starting five would be top class in the NFL. Now I'm glad you stuck to the end because I'm gonna throw a little bit of a curveball, and that is this. If Ashton Genty is available in the top five picks and the Raiders are on the board, I think that the Raiders should pass on a QB this year in the first round and grab Ashton Genty. This kid is most likely going to win the Heisman Trophy Award when he goes and breaks Barry Sanders' collegiate career of rushing for over 2,600 yards in a single season. He is on track to do that, and when he does so, Ashton Genty will be the only running back in the first round selected, and he will be the only running back to win the Heisman since 
2015, and therefore you cannot pass up on a generational player like Genty. Genty will be an immediate, explosive running back in the NFL for whatever team that he is on. And if you go and grab him, you could still possibly end up with a Carson Beck in the second round. And Carson Beck, I believe, is my third quarterback on this list. But since he lost to Alabama, his stock has dropped significantly. And you could see that Carson Beck ends up in the second round, just right in the lap of the Las Vegas Raiders. Imagine this, Brock Bowers as tight end. Ashton Genty as running back and Carson Beck at your quarterback. The Raiders would have a significant offensive advantage over most teams in the NFL just with those three players alone. And all of them are young and all of them will grow together. If you agree or disagree on Ashton Genty rather than a quarterback, drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to respond to each and every one of them.